The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unew Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. here with literally 30 seconds to spare came on the air just like that it is january 22nd already brad majors can you believe it i cannot i know it's already flying pinch me no don't i'll tell (laughs) but yeah that was a little that was a little like um Oh, well, excitement for the evening. Wow, that's pretty lame if that's my only <laughs> excitement. But, um, so speaking of excitement, Brad, did you watch the football games on Sunday? I did. They were fantastically entertaining, which yeah. is... Fantastic football at its finest. How's that for some F-words? I know some people out there, there were go. saying some other F-words, though. Major. It- Major. And some of them rightly so. I mean, rightly so. There were some, there were some questionable Two things time. happening. What's that? Two overtimes. Two overtimes, right, Jimmy? So, yeah. so Jimmy, being East Coast, I, I'm sure you, you wanted the Chiefs to win, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I was rooting for them, especially in the coin toss. Yeah. I was pissed they lost. Man, I really, I really did want the Chiefs. I wanted it to be, I wanted the Rams and the Chiefs this year. Honestly, did. So did I. I wanted, I wanted the, the Patriots and Saints. I, you know what? I, I just can't, I can't get myself to root for the Saints. So they I got. It. It. But um, they did. I think that's the better matchup. That was they no, got I robbed because I, 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 I don't go along with that, that overtime, overtime thing, not giving the other team a chance. Yeah. Right? Exactly. It's like whoever got the toss, they won. I no, that's exactly. Unless they, they screw up. up. Unless they screw up really bad. I was waiting for Brady to throw an interception, and he didn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, you oh, tried to. Wouldn't have that? Wouldn't that have been horrible? No, you know what? It's like, I've got to say. I feel like those two games, though, were some of the most well-matched games I've seen in a long time. They were. I mean, to both end up in overtime, to, you know, oh, my God, how long was that kick that he made at at the end of the game? 57. 57. 57? That's crazy. That doesn't happen. Not if you're a Viking, at least. (laughs) If you wow. look at that, uh, that kick would have been good from probably 60, 65. Yeah, I know. Like I said, he, he hit, hit it pretty good. good. So, Jimmy, who are you picking? Oh, of course, the Patriots. All right, so what are we going to bet? I didn't, I didn't think they were going to get by the Chiefs. Chiefs. I really didn't. I was, I was, you know, just because I'm, I'm one of those I don't want the underdog to win kind of deal. Remember that TV show, Underdog? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. But uh, I'm like sweet Polly purebred. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, so I'm. I got a root for the Rams, and so I think we need to place a bet. All right. All right. What should we bet, Brad? I don't know. Brad, who are you? Pi- who are you picking, Brad? I I'd like to see the Rams. Okay. When? All right. So after the Super Bowl, I think what I should do, we'll, we'll fit, I'm going to think about it during the show here, and we'll, we'll get it figured out. But, um, you know, I want to talk about football, though, and finance, okay? So, Brad, can you Google real quick, see what the average, I was going to do this earlier, then I got distracted. Let's blame it on the Lyme yeah. disease. But I wonder how much a player makes when they make it to the Super Bowl. All right. 
Sorry, give me a second. Let me give you a second. And the, and the reason why I'm bringing it up is, I mean, when you think of all the money that is spent on the Super Bowl. Now, last year we had it here in Minneapolis. I have no desire after having it here last year and literally 10 days of extreme partying. <laughs> I, I could say no, but for some reason I have a trouble or, you know, trouble doing that. But um, I just went, you know, I, I can't do it to myself again this year. So I'm, I'm opting out of going down to Atlanta. But when you think of all of the money that people, number one, they spend just to go to the game. I mean, I'm hearing that it's if you buy a ticket like the game on game day, it's like ten grand. I mean, I was getting tickets lined up for people, but it was like you know the least amount you would pay would be three thousand dollars for nosebleeds. I'd rather stay home, see the commercials, or be at a party and see the commercials. And have fun and actually really know what's going on. Because I'm not really good at... I go to a lot of games, Jimmy. You'd be amazed. All the home games I go to, I have a hard time following when I'm looking down at the field. Even when I'm up in the suite, I'm looking at the TV. Just yeah, easier. I, know, I know what you mean. Some of the, most of the time I was in the game, I was watching the Cinematron there. Yeah. It, it just seems like... I mean, it's because we're so much used, more used to following it that way. To look down at them, it's, I don't know. I missed something in translation, I guess. But what did you find so, out, Brad? So the, the average player on the winning team in the Super Bowl is going to make about $110,000, $112,000. That's not a bad payday. So that's, no, that is, that's a good chunk of money. Not bad for one game. Right, and then when you consider, I mean, so that's on top of their contract. I wonder right, what the losing team like gets. For them. The losing team, I mean, just winning the championship, I wonder how much they made with that. But the reason why I want to touch on that is because I know a lot of people that have been in Super Bowls um, that that $112,000 would come in handy right about now. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, because think about think about the leverage that you can get on that. The average person to have one hundred and ten thousand dollars extra just fall in your lap. I mean that that's life changing money to a lot of people. Even a millionaire. No, it is. I mean that's that's a car, <laughs> right? <laughs> a very good I car. I mean it falls very in their car. lap. I mean they were hard for it. No, they do. I mean, these guys, they, I mean, they beat up their bodies. They beat up their brains playing this game that they love so much. They use them really well. But, unfortunately, they make all that money. And, and you know, the league average, I want to say for, you know, like, annual income, I want to say the league average is probably around, like, four hundred to 500000 which still in our standards is, is a lot of money, but they have to pay their agents. You know, they pay taxes in all the states that they have to play in. So, I mean, when it comes all down to it at the end of the day, I mean, you're a regular guy player, not Randy Moss's or, you know, obviously the Tom Brady's. But, um, I mean, they have to really, really plan. So, I mean, seriously... Brad, you know, you you and I are both in the business. Jimmy, we, we work with guys on their retirement, not just guys, women, men, women, families, on their retirement and getting themselves set up. But these guys are really young. And because I know, like, one of my friends, he retired at age 36 from the NFL. So when you consider retirement and in general... You know, what do we normally think? 65 years old. I'm going to work until I'm 65, and then I'm going to retire. And then I'm going to live, hopefully, 20 years. And I've got this much money saved up. But, Brad, think about that. Think, a, think about a 36-year-old. 30, 30, what are your thoughts on that? That's a... 
that's kind of a scary proposition. I think that's a long time to to fund a lifestyle, you know, to to live the way you want to live and do the things you want to do and not bring in extra money. So to have, you know, something like just using the benchmark, one hundred and ten thousand dollars. I mean, what are, you know, what, what could you do with that um, okay. at, you know, 40, you know, 36, 46, 56, you know, leading into that time when you really need it? Well, let's, let's just, let's, let's put like an average age, like the player would be like 26 years old. He's in, you know, and he's still got years left to play, hopefully. But let's say he's 28 years old and he gets, you know, $112,000 extra winning the Super Bowl, I would think it's more. I don't know why, <laughs> but I would think it's more. But let's say that he's 28 years old. What If he's going to do, like, if you're going to recommend something, by the way, Jimmy, if you ever want somebody to talk to, my dear friend Brad here is a licensed advisor. Um, but what would you recommend a 28-year-old young man with a family, maybe... Maybe more than one baby mama, but what should he do with that hundred and twelve thousand dollars? Put you on the spot. I think as an athlete, I would, I would want to think about how I can invest large portions of my money for a long period of time without, without. Uh, too much risk, taking enough risk to make it worth my while. But man, I, I just don't think that's what's happening. <laughs> no, it's not. So let's. I mean, but I'm just gonna say. So what if, what if you got a chance to sit down with the 28 year old and he's got, man, I got this hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Trying to figure out what I want to do. I want to make sure I have it when I get older. Um, I, you know, I've got kids. But, you know, what do you think is the smartest thing I could do with this money? I think that's a long conversation. Okay, you know, you're not how making does it... this easy for me, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I think, you you? Uh, I think he, he would probably want a fair, you know, if he's starting a family, he'd want a fair amount of life insurance. There we go. He'd want some, some good investments. Um, let's, let's back it up to, to the life insurance part of it, because that's where I was trying to steer you towards. Because he's 28, but he's an NFL player, so that's something we would, you know, talk to one of our underwriters about. But let's say he's got kids, um, making sure that he's got something set up for them with some of that money. For sure, for sure. So funding their college. And life insurance can be a great way of of helping to fund, you know, do some college planning and fund uh, that phase of your life. Okay. So that, I mean, one thing that I know that, Jimmy, I don't know if you know this, but what's that coach's name that you have? You there? Jimmy. <laughs> Maybe he went away. I'm right here. What would you say? What, what's your coach's name again? Oh, Bill Belichick. I just wanted to hear you say it with your Eastern accent. <laughs> Bill Belichick. Say it again. Billy Belichick. <laughs> Do you know what he does every year? No, so I don't. Other than gets, win? I know, right? Other than win, exactly. He buys himself an annuity every year for a million dollars. Oh, does he really? He takes a million dollars and puts it in an annuity Wow! that he's not going to touch. And I know this because his advisor puts it through our company. Brad, did you know that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had heard that. I had heard that. So, I mean, I think... Must be crap giving him a bonus. Oh, right? So, you know what? Last year... Uh, I was at Randy Moss's Super Bowl party, name drop number one, um, <laughs> and I'm I'm standing there, and Randy was up talking and you know thanking everybody for being there. And it was a really small, intimate party, and um, he had a DJ, he had um, a comedian there, 
his name, but you see him on TV all the time. But um, I'm standing next to this guy, an older man, quite short, no clue who he was, la, 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 drinking these amazing drinks. And they were, they were called Get Mossed or something. There was some kind of moss drink, and there was like some moss in it or something. They were so good, and I drank a lot of them, and they were free. And then when we were walking away, my friend Griff is like, oh, Kathy, take my picture, Mr. Kraft. Oh, we were standing by all night, didn't even know, didn't even say hi, not even a clue. But, yeah, just kind of rub, literally rubbing elbows with them. Well, actually, it was probably more so like Did you talk directly with him, or were you just standing next to him? No, I talked to him. I'm like, what a great party. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. Like, Who's that old guy? No, I didn't do that. But, um, yeah, it was pretty fun. It was a really was he nice party. to you? He was nice. He was very nice, very cordial. Pictures. I didn't take a picture with him. I took pictures of my friends with him. Didn't even think of it. Um, there was there was some fun people there. Um, but when you that would have been a great one for your collection, though. I know, right? But I did it, yeah. Because yeah. I was like, Kathy, take my picture with him. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's kind of like you can't miss these opportunities if you're going to come out with a book later. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, I've got the pictures <laughs> with the other people with him, so. <laughs> It works. Yeah, but my book, see, he's, he's, what chapter would I have him in? Not any of the naughty ones, so. I don't know if you can <laughs> borrow no, Yes, yeah, see, some of the things I've done in my life, I can't tell on this show or on the phone. Trouble. Kidding. Um, so getting back to, to football players, though. And their retirement. Um, I want. I want to hear. What do you guys think about the concussions? I mean, and, I mean, there's a big concussion settlement out there. That there's. Do you think they deserve it, or do you think that they knew what they were getting into? I don't. It's it's hard for me to say that with the amount of education that they're throwing at the players these days and the amount of resources they're spending on the training staff and awareness and even the rules changing that, I mean, at some point you are taking a risk that you know about, that you're fully aware of and signed off on, you know? Okay, but But that's, don't you think that's kind of recent though? I mean, yes, because they they literally would, I mean, now they've got concussion protocol. Um, They've got... The guys, you know, back in the day, they called them stingers. And, you know, they'd give them the smelling salts and tell them to run back out there. You know, so they didn't, they just kind of brushed it off. I mean, those are the guys, you know, the older guys that didn't get that knowledge as much. It was literally, you know, suck it up. Right? Right. I mean, so... Well, even from when I played as a kid... I mean, the, the knowledge has definitely come a long way. Obviously, the, the research and protocols that they mm-hmm. put in place have, have come a very, very long way. I was, um, so yeah. I, having you're my absolutely kids play, right. Yeah, having my kids play, that was always my fear. And, I mean, I, I hadn't thought of it until they started playing. And when my, my oldest... It was a double, oh my, horrible to me as as a female. My son was the only one out there with two stripes on his helmet. I'm like, so why does my son have two stripes on his helmet? Well, because your son is not allowed to carry the football because he's a head taller than all the other kids. He's bigger and he's heavier. My God, that doesn't seem fair, right? It seems a little redundant. I mean, if he's the tallest kid, why do you have to put two stripes on it to, like, signal that that's the tallest kid? I mean, I know. you just to me, look it's out like, there. He's the tallest. To me, it's like a, 
an eating disorder if I was a girl. I'm like, really? You're going to put on my helmet that I am bigger and fatter than everybody else? Don't, because, you know, that's how that's going in, in the little teenage girl mind. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to, as, as Tom called it, as our good friend Tom called it, flip. I'm going to be flipping <laughs> that stuff. I'm going to go out and eat. I'm going to flip it. Uh, oh, my gosh. That, that sounded horrible. No, but, you know, it, but you do what you got to do. I mean, think of all the athletes. I mean, they work out so hard. Where that's all that they do. And with the, like, with the jockeys, like with Tom last week, I got hearing about what they have to do to be light enough and I was I was out um, to a lunch meeting with him last week, and he didn't order lunch. And I'm really? Like, and I'm like, mm, no, I kind of feel like not ordering lunch, right? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, I can't let this guy under eat me. <laughs> no, and I mean, I got a salad, but he just said he's like, no, I I have. He's very regimented in what he eats. Like he'll have an apple. He said he'll have like oatmeal for breakfast and he'll have an apple and some water at lunch and then he'll have dinner. No drinking. No drinking. Uh. Because he said that if he were to go to a racetrack tomorrow, he'd want to be able to get up on that horse. Yeah. I, I mean, understand it's that. It's not like he races anymore, but you know what? People do ask him to get up and run their horses for him. Well, I mean, you know a lot of those football players have trouble leaving the game, right? Yes. I've, I've, at least that's what I've heard, Yeah. and I believe it. You know, they when their time is done, they long to be out there, and it's probably really hard for the first couple of years. Oh, exactly. And I imagine, you know, he's probably gone through the same thing. You know, I bet. I mean, lucky for him... And I, you know, and did I mention I just adore him? I I think he's such a great guy. I mean, he's really a good man. But I love his accent. Oh, I know, right? I can't sit there and just listen to him talk all the time. Kind of like Jimmy's accent. I love Jimmy's accent. Jimmy should talk more often. I'm really proud of us for not trying to mimic his accent. I know. Right, right at this moment, because that is my normal go-to move is to try and. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, all I can, all, the only thing I'd say is on the haba. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go buy some baked beans on the haba, Boston. But uh, <laughs> and, and I sound and I sound stupid. I don't even know how. I can't even. I can't even. But um, you no, know, for the football players. I mean, so. A lot of the guys, I've done a lot of focus groups. There's an F word. But they always say, from the focus groups that I've had, if, if, if they knew then what they know now, what would they do differently? The number one thing every single one of them said, out hesitation, is that they would educate themselves on their money. And not take it for granted. You know, and not just leave it to somebody else, but actually know what it is that they're doing. Making sure that they are, you know, investing in vehicles that aren't going to take everything away. One of the things that I think um, a lot of the athletes should know about that with Hall of Fame Financial, I, I think it's really important us to get this word out there but don't put your own personal money or credit at risk so you can get you can get funding on your EIN start your new business you can do that and not put your own house at risk Does that make sense for sure so be uh, there yeah, being able to help the guys understand how to do that, um, understand how to best, you know, prioritize. As what's you were looking up some stuff you were saying earlier. Well, yeah, I well, I came across some stuff because 
we were talking about this earlier. I uh, am kind of a, a nerd in a way like when I do these CE courses that we're continuously learning about our industry, which I love, um, you know, that it forces yeah. us to just get better at what we do. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading through yeah. this and I came across some stuff like that where it's, it was uh, geared towards the elderly, but, you know, exchange a group here, you know, it happens at every level mm -hmm. with every race. Um, you know, you don't have to be rich for this to happen to you, you know, but that abuse typically happens with people you know, people that are around you. And, you know, that was that's one of the big fears that the elderly and the aging population have right now is, you know, the stories of abuse uh, from financial advisors and stories of abuse from their POAs and the, their family members are the people that they trust the most oh my taking gosh. advantage of them. Right. And, and I, you know, I, it's got to be the same for the players, I would think. Well, I think a degree. lot of times it's, it's not so much that they're abusing, but they're using with the players. It's right. like, you know, I've got, you know, hey, you know, I was there for you. I drove you to your little league and I, you know, hung out with your uncle and, you know, all these different people with their hands out. And athletes, for the most part, are not used to saying no. It's yes, coach. Or, you know what I mean? They're, right. they're more programmed to say yes than they are to say no. So for them to be able to say no... To somebody that is a friend or, or family member is is very difficult. And I know that those are some of the things that they go through, you know, in the rookie symposiums that they have. I'm not quite sure what they do now. But family, I think, you're right, is number one. Um, elderly, definitely. I mean, people take advantage. I mean, you hear oh. stories all the time. It is absolutely without a doubt number one okay get this get this there is a girl that i used to be friends with that i'd known since the seventh grade and she came back here to minnesota we became friends again and we hung out together we did everything together um and I come to find out and she ended up not being the person that i thought she was she was very here's a good word Fake. There is a word. That's a yeah. word for her. Fake friend. Um, used people. Oh, I didn't no. see it. My mother saw it. But when I found out, so she had an elderly mother. And she was staying with her. And her sister came to me crying. Saying, what should I do? Because her mom was upset over her bank accounts. And it turns out that my friend and her daughter were using the mom's account to pay for themselves for things that the mom, who was in her 80s, would never have done like go to Victoria's Secret. Or, wait, so you were skiing up in Lutzen? Well, no. So all of these charges mean thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, right. it just, um, I mean, that's, she showed that's me the bank accounts. So it was like, she showed me the bank statements. So it was like right there. Wow. So I couldn't like, be like, no, she wouldn't really do that. He showed me. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. And somebody so, that I knew. So you knew this, you knew this gal, she... Like in jail now or what? what? No, her mom wouldn't press charges. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know how you live with yourself when you do that kind of stuff. I mean, it was bad enough that, you know, she slighted me as a friend. But when I found out she was doing that to her own mother, it's like, okay, why would I expect... You know, because I had things go missing. I had a gorgeous necklace 
a mother and child necklace that I got for father for Mother's Day. My kid's father. One year. Missing. Can't find it. I had a cowboy hat that I got in Cabo. Can't find it. Shoes. Can't find them. You know, just stupid things that go missing. When you give somebody all that access, they just... Uh... But that's, I mean, that's some of the pitfalls. My God. I can't even... So it's... And I mean, and that's somebody that didn't have a lot of money. Yeah, that's an incredible story. I can't. I, you said it though. How could you live with yourself, right? And and I was thinking about, um, you know, your you, what you said. A lot of the players' comments are: if you regret or if you would do something different, what yeah. would it be? And I would learn more about managing my own money. Exactly. So why, that's a very astute thing to say, but it's a little late to be saying it. Well, that's why. And so, yeah, and, and I get it. I get it. It's like, wh who's guy, you know, if you do it yourself, if you learn for yourself, then you can only be mad at yourself. But right. if other people are doing it for you or helping in that process, then naturally, if things go south, you're going to blame them. And that's, that's maybe harder to reconcile than being mad at yourself. True. That's true. But so I think, you know, getting somebody that is trustworthy, getting somebody that's not out, take advantage. That, I mean, it's hard to find. I, I learned over the last year that... There were more people out there that I couldn't trust than who, that I could. And it made me very sad. It made me, you know, I, I sat alone on New Year's, kind of just reflecting on all of it, going, wow. I wrote down names, people that don't get to go into the new year with me because of different things. It's like, all right, I'm not going to, you know, make any scenes or anything, but I just kind of wrote them off. And... You know, I've had people go, wow, Kathy, you've been really quiet. Yeah. Yeah, if the one thing that I can't get back is time, and you took up too much time, and it didn't mean any, didn't get me anywhere, probably not going to give you that much time now. I understand. I understand that philosophy. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to have people around you, and Cheryl is said this to me before. I love, I love this, some of the stuff that she shares with me, but, um, you know, you got to surround yourself with people that bring you joy, bring you entertainment, bring you value. Right. You know, value. If they, um, if they don't fit into your focus, your faith, your family, your friendships, then what are they doing? Right. Okay, so now I'm going to change up the subject because something else you were telling me about earlier. Let's about football and finance. Let's talk about some other stuff. What was it? You're talking about tipping. Oh, I was ready. I wanted to rant. Okay. Uh, just a little bit, but I don't want to make myself at you know at the risk of making myself look petty. I just I'm confused about how we get services these days. Right. Okay. So, so I've I always I view myself as a very fair person and somebody that likes good value. When I go into a restaurant, I like to be treated like the other people are being treated at the very least. Right. You know, and you know, if you're going to read that person all the specials, read that stuff to me. I want to hear that too. You know. Right. Um, so I, I just get in a mode, like, if I have a good time and I don't think about the service, then it must have been good. And if I do think about it and it was good, then great. You know, like, I just generally, I tip about 20%, 25%. Yeah, me too. Which I think is super fair. Right. And I usually don't try and find ways to not tip. At least that, you know, I don't like, oh, well, he screwed that up or she screwed that up. I'm taking 10% off. I don't do that, generally speaking. But 
but now I'm feeling pressure to tip in places where I wouldn't normally tip. Okay. And I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, explain, Lucy. Explain, Lucy. So, so like the other day, I was in a fast food restaurant. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay. I'm not even gonna. T I'm not even gonna tell you what kind of food it was, but it was delicious. And I want to go back there, but I'm just struggling with this right now. So I'm in there, and I'm buying this food, and I get to the register, and the the kid. He's a kid. Behind the register is like super energetic, and he's like, "You want to? Yeah, um, your your bill is like this much. Boom, boom, boom. Are you part of the rewards for And I'm like, "No, I don't get the rewards program." He's like, "You want it? It's just gonna. I just type your phone number in, and boom, you're done. We're not gonna text you. We're not gonna blah 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 blah." I'm like, "Yeah, sure, all right." I give him my phone number, and he rings me up, and on the screen in front of me, it says. You know, do you want to tip 10%, 15%, 20%, or not, nothing? Right? No, <laughs> or nothing. And like, it's in yeah, front of this nothing. kid, yeah, right? Like zero, you got to do right? it in front of yeah, the kid? Like, yes, and this kid is looking at me. <laughs> no. And, you know, I'm like, no, nothing, nothing, boom. And he can't see what I hit, but it prints out on the receipt. And I saw him look at the receipt, you know, the part that he keeps. And he, he, like, just shakes his head and then throws it away. And I'm like, he didn't even try to hide it because he is a kid. He doesn't he hasn't lived long enough to understand the nuances of yeah, he's human probably, interaction. Yeah, you probably a booger on your food. <laughs> no, but it's one of those joints where I see everything that's happening, so I can, you know, I'm not worried about it. Okay, good. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm like... He just judged me for not tipping at a fast food place. Well, okay. And I'm like, do they bring it out? Know, wait, okay. is that a thing now? I'm okay. sorry, I didn't know. So I didn't catch that. I okay. So I've not noticed it, and I probably have tipped when I shouldn't have. I'm guessing, but there's uh -huh. some places where they give you, yeah. Where you go up and you order, and the, but some of the places bring it to your table. Did they bring it to you? Uh, no, I'm in line. No, I'm. I'm just. Gra I'm grabbing my food from him, and I'm leaving. Like he didn't even touch my food. He just touched my money. So yeah, lame. I went. <laughs> there's this place. So there was a place that I went to. Where I went to go pick up food. So what do you think? I mean, I don't feel like I should have to tip if I have to drive to the place and go pick it up. Like Chinese takeout. Like Chinese takeout or, or a, you know, a nice pizza place. A pizza place if you pick it up. Right. I mean, there is, there is pressure to tip there, and I'm just not sure I should be. Like, maybe... It doesn't need to be twenty percent. Maybe it's just a dollar or whatever. Like, but why? Oh, here you go. But why? I spent my gas I money know. to go get it, and it's not I, okay. Exactly. But so it's like there's this place in Excelsior, the best pizza. I swear it's so good. <laughs> but I wondered because when I went to go pick up the pizza, it you know they bring you know they ring it up. And you do it at the hostess stand, though. And so I, you know, I just put the amount that the pizza was. And I kind of felt, though, I kind of felt like the guy looked at me, too. And I'm like, hey, Of course what? he did. Of course he did. Yes. I mean, it's like, like I don't know. Things have changed a little bit out there, maybe. I don't know. But it just doesn't make sense to me. It's like, dude. They pay you, you know, you're not waiting on me. Yes, you grabbed the pizza and brought it to me. But that doesn't warrant a tip to me. Especially if I don't yeah. get it. Now, if I was there early and I was having some drinks waiting for my pizza, hell yeah, you're getting the tip then. Yeah. Right? If I'm sitting... Sitting at the bar, 
I'll let the bartender ring it up. I'm ordering it to go. And I'll tip them for the pizza because in that sense, I believe, and I might be wrong, I believe that the server who rings it up is taxed on your ticket. Really? Yes. Because they're making a percentage of that ticket? They get, they get not because they're, it's assumed that they're making a percentage. Gotcha. The minimum that the minimum tax that they would impose on on because tip, yeah. tips and exactly because they have to claim tips. So at the end of the night, I mean, they're expected to you know have a certain amount. I think that position is not required. Yeah, I don't know. I think we need to look. We need to find that out. I think we need to figure that out, yeah. Because, okay, so when we talk about service, when you're talking about, my kids always get upset with me. They call it my disapproving phase. God, <laughs> Mom, don't make your disapproving face. What? And I'm of the belief that, hey, if I'm paying for it, I'm going to get what I'm paying for. I've met your kids, so I'm sure you haven't you haven't said this, but you didn't like it. I wouldn't make this face if you didn't train me to. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> well, like, this no. is all your fault. No, they no. they watch me because they, they see me in public, and so okay, here's and they always go. I've heard some stories about you in public. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> so the. <laughs> I mean, they're like, Mom, Mom, seriously, why does it always happen to you? Because you're the one that always reacts the most. But, okay, here's, here's the best one. And I'm going to give you an example of a time when I left a really good tip for my waiter. Even though I had something horrible. So, I had my middle son and his girlfriend and my oldest son in town. This was last... June, and I was on my vegan kick. It, my youngest son couldn't make it there in time, so we ordered. And I'm like, yeah, get whatever you want, guys. And I ordered, first I ordered, you know, Brussels sprouts. I asked the waiter, hey, how do you make those? We broil them. Cool. I would like those. Get my Brussels sprouts, and there's bacon in them. He never once mentioned there's bacon. I'm a vegan. I can't eat that. It's hated when I'd say, I'm a vegan. Hated that. Like, oh, I can't have it like that. I'm a vegan. But that's okay. I'll just pick around it. And I guess I get this disapproving face. I'll show it to you tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> so, so I get this I'm look. I'm picturing it. Okay. So I get this look. And then I also, I ordered a salad. And I'm like, can you um, exchange the chicken for avocado? No cheese, no egg, no, no croutons, but, you know, just got extra avocado. And, oh, yeah, I'll have a sparkling water with a lemon. Thanks. And so the kids all ordered, you know, their burgers or whatever it was they had, and they're having cocktails. And I am on my third bite of my salad, and I'm like, hmm, something in my mouth is in my mouth. That shouldn't be in my mouth. I don't even say what I know what you want to say. <laughs> but, I'm, tr I'm trying really hard to hold it together. <laughs> and I pull said thing out of my mouth and look at it and put it on the little bread plate in front of me. And I go, that's a fingernail. Oh, my God. Brad. And, and Keaton's sitting right across from me and he goes, no, it's not. That's an onion. Because it had that, like, a red onion color on one side and white on the other. And it was, like, easily a ring finger, fingernail, and long and painted. It was just, just the fingernail, though, right? Not, not like, a tip, not, like, yep. finger, too. Just the fingernail okay. tip. 
it had obviously it was a real fingernail not a fake fingernail because you can see the jagged edge that it, it was a broken fingernail that came off oh, it was girl. in my mouth mouth yuck in when was the next time you, like how could you eat again no keaton, <laughs> keaton picks it up and he's like oh it is a fingernail and there's the f word for tonight folks fingernail <laughs> And Austin, so Austin gets the waiter to come over. Bless his heart. Is that his fault? No. The only thing that he might have, you know, he could have done maybe differently was tell me that there's bacon in the Brussels sprouts, but I'm not, you know, whatever. Who cares? They were really good, probably because they had bacon fat all over them. But I only had a couple. Mm -hmm. But that anyway, delicious. I got freaking fingernail in my mouth and we show the waiter and he immediately starts dry heaving and my oh, kids when i when i said that and i have my napkin up to my mouth because holy sh stuff, i might throw up at the table with other people around i'm like oh my god and all i could kept all i kept saying was like it was in my mouth god it was in my mouth and the waiter comes over, he's dry heaving, goes, takes the plate with the fingernail line, goes back, gets a manager, and they figure out, yeah, it was a salad chef, salad prep girl, her fingernail, it matched. Oh, look, there's your fingernail, that's oh. missing, that was in her salad, right? So oh, like, and, the, and the waiter's like, oh, my God, they're supposed to wear gloves. Well, obviously, she wasn't. So, ew, right? And... Oh. And so, <laughs> oh my God! So the waiter comes out, and his eyes were like so big; he looked like he was gonna cry. And I still got the napkin in my mouth, and my kids can't eat anymore, and they're just watching me waiting because they're like, "Mom, please don't cause a scene." <laughs> wow! Don't cause a scene. I don't want to get everybody else in the restaurant all alarmed, mind you, but I'm not going to just sit here. I mean, I'm not going to cause a scene and scream and say there's a fingernail in my salad. That's not my you know, my way, but they're going to know. So the poor, <laughs> the poor manager comes over, and he's like, obviously, obviously everything is comped. Let me get you something else. And I'm like, Probably. Because I had a fingernail yeah. in my mouth. And so then they leave, you know, and they're, everything's on the house. Order more drinks. Of course, I'm not drinking then, but I ended up, since Mason couldn't make it, I ordered, like, the most, and the waiter's like, order the most expensive. Right? <laughs> so I got lobster yeah. macaroni and cheese and to bring for Mason because we're going to meet up with him a little later. Got him some desserts. You now kids had a couple more drinks. They didn't finish their food. They gave each of the kids two hundred and fifty dollar gift card. Or no, hundred. Oh wow! No, all together I got all together I got three hundred dollars gift cards. Plus they paid for our meal, which was easily over two hundred and fifty. Um, wow. Yeah, it was one of those a nicer, higher, higher end place, and um, so the manager's like everything's comped, all of that. Of course, my kids are making little comments now. You know that the it was still lingering where I I could have easily puked. I still thinking about oh, yeah. the puke, but uh, Keaton's like, oh my god, mom. You're saying that that's like the one place people don't wash is behind you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not helping. That's, I'm like, I'm you're not helping me. And Austin's, and Austin, oh Austin's like, wow, they really nailed that salad, huh? Good. I'm like, thank you. You know, I'm trying not to, it's like, they're trying to make me laugh. And then I tell the waiter, I said, can you tell me what the total amount of the bill is? Because I, or not the waiter. I told the manager, can you tell me the total amount of the bill? Because I want to take care of our waiter. And he's like, oh. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, because right? 
Not his yeah, fault. Absolutely. I still tipped that waiter 20% of what the bill would have been had there not been a fingernail in my salad. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right? I, I agree with that. I agree with that <laughs> wholeheartedly. And, of course, when I said I wanted to know what to tip my waiter, and my son goes, just the tip, Mom. <laughs> Fingertip? I'm like, thank you. I was like, I'm leaving, leaving. And my kids were just like, afterwards, and we left there in hysterics. And they're like, Mom, of all people, with your disapproving face, that's your karma for all of the times you've complained about your meals. That's what my kids said was happening to me. That's what you well, get. But I'm not. <laughs> I believe in a little bit of that. No, no. No. Okay, wait. Brad. Karma. Okay. You don't believe in karma? I do believe in karma. But oh. I'm not doing anything wrong in my eyes. Oh, okay. I, I, I know. I know exactly how you feel. If you, order, if you order steak and they bring you chicken, are you going to be happy with that? No. No, no. Well, my kids no, would no. expect me, hey, Mom, just eat the chicken. Don't cause a scene. That's no, my you know where are. my mind went? My, well, wait a minute. What kind of chicken are we talking about? You know, chicken of the sea. <laughs> I don't know, bitch. <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, wait. Bringing, this is not what I ordered. And my kids right. are like, come on. You don't have to be rude. I'm not being rude. How is it rude for me to say, this isn't what I ordered. Or, you know what? I ordered it medium rare. Well done. Can you take it? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. That's not rude. You should, yeah, absolutely. It took me a long time to kind of get in the groove of that. You know, because you can absolutely convey that without being rude. That's, I don't feel like I'm rude. My kids say that I am. And I don't think I am. They right. Don't. I I get you. And I don't think my kids realized that I was in the restaurant business for years. And so I'm always the most understanding as well as, you know what? No, I, I kind of want good service. If I'm paying for it, do it the right way. Right. So if there's, there's a place right by our office that you go up to the counter and you order... And you grab your silverware and you grab your water glass, but they bring the food out to you, or if you order a drink, they bring it to you, do you think you should tip them? Am I paying at the register or am I paying at my table? Yeah, you're paying at the register. Well, I don't think it's inappropriate to throw that person a couple bucks if you have it but you know they're if they are waiting on you then absolutely i don't know you know some of those places don't allow it like I, that happened to me once at buyer lease right this kid bagged all my stuff loaded it into his cart took it out to my car put it into my car i didn't touch anything and i tried to give him a couple bucks and he's like no i can't can't do that right you know but yeah but this this place, even when oh yeah, even when you do the drive through at this place, it leaves. But like when you give them your card, you get it back here at drive through, and you pay for it. But they haven't brought you the food. And I'm always afraid not to tip because what if they're gonna like spit in my coffee? They're not tipping. They're well, not gonna spit in your coffee. I know you, they're not you, going to. But, I mean, it's like, I'm going to the drive-thru. I shouldn't have to tip people, but it's on there like what you said. This yeah, is very perplexing. You know, we have to answer this. This is going to bother me now. <laughs> this turned into a good rant. And it turned into, you know, like everybody getting to hear your nail story. I, did told talk that about it right, I talked about it right after. Trust me. I'm still, oh, yeah. I've been well, back to that place and I'm still not over it. 
I do. Were you on a when you were talking about this? Were you on a couch and somebody was scribbling in a pad next to you? Uh, I probably should have. <laughs> That's. You know, think of how easy. Oh, well, okay. I don't want to do this to everybody, and I'm so sorry. Probably had a cell in your phone, and you just oh. didn't know it. That's where I'm having the biggest problem. <laughs> They're like, oh, I, I, if no. I am going to be, I'm not, ugh, no, I'm not, I don't want to be a part of. Like, I want to experience this through you. I don't want to imagine that some of my food might have had a fingernail in it. Well, Jimmy's telling us we have to wrap it up. Jimmy? Yes? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, thank you. Look at how it turned out. I had 30 seconds to spare. Here we go. We have to wrap it up, Brad. Um, so I think F word for the night, football, finance. And fingernails. How's that? Sounds good. All right, guys. Have a great night. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll talk to you next week on The F Word. Thank you, Joe and Jimmy, for all you do.